Hello everyone. This is a small side project that I have been planning to do for a long time, but never got around to start it until recently. My own RP2040 based module. The objective with this project is to build my own microcontroller design that I can integrate in my future modules. So this is the first small step in that direction. Board space is really not a design constraint at this moment, so I'm planning to use components that I already have available or I can easily get hold of. There is another reason for doing this as well. The Raspberry Pi Pico is a great platform for starting exploring the RP2040 and it's relatively cheap but there are a couple of things that I don't like with it. And the first one is that it has a switch mode power supply to regulate the input voltage down to 3.3 volts which causes interference issues for the ADC and surrounding analog electronics. It also has the old mini USB connector which is a bit fragile and difficult to insert. The RP2040 and the Pico module does not have any e square PROM, which is something that I really need for parameter storage. Finally, it lacks the reset button, which is very useful to have during software development. The documentation from Raspberry Foundation is very good, and there is a step-by-step -step guide for designing around RP2040. So by following that, I have come up with a design that looks like this. If we start at the left side here, we have the USB-C connector. And as you can see, this is a connection for USB 2.0. So we have the mode uh, uh, selector resistors here, and we have some uh, ESD protection on the, on the inputs. And we have the VBUS uh, output from the um, connector that is uh, connected to the voltage regulator here. And we also have an external voltage input that goes to the same regulator. And after that we have the uh, 3 volt uh, voltage reference that is connected to the ADC uh, supply voltage here. And you can also reach it from, from the outside. And uh, the big part here is of course the RP2040 with a crystal oscillator over here and we also have the flash memory here it's a qsb i flash up at the top here we see all the decoupling capacitors that are used for the different voltages that are that are supplied to the rp2040 and also the uh, internally generated 1.1 volt uh, core voltage for the cpu core all right if you go to the top level uh, we see we have uh, some input filtering over here and here we have the i square c uh, ee prom that is used for parameter storage and at the uh, right side here at the bottom we have the buttons that they are using for putting the device into boot cell mode or to reset it if you need to do that and these connectors here are pin headers that uh, are used for interconnecting the module with the outside world so to speak after ordering PCBs and a stencil, it's time to assemble one board and bring it up. The first step will be to build a small jig so I can apply solder paste using the stencil. After aligning the stencil to the PCB pads, the solder paste is applied using a plastic spatula and I make sure that the stencil is pressed down to the PCB to avoid smearing. Let's start by having a look at the solder paste application. In general it looks quite good, but I think that the QFN pads might have a little bit too much paste on them. I will probably need to clean this up after the board has been soldered. I'm a bit worried about the oxidation on the QFN connections, so I'm using some extra flux on the edges and center pad. The center pad is the only ground connection for the RP2040. The first component will be the RP2040. There is a pin marking on the IC that should be aligned with the white dot on the PCB. Next up is the Schottky diodes for feeding power. The footprint here is actually the diode that is used for the Raspberry Pi Pico, but I couldn't source that one, so I had to use a more common type instead. The flash is a big SO8, and as you can see it's wider than the regular SO8 package. So, to make it fit I had to bend the legs a little bit. This issue is of course fixed on the second spin of the PCBs. The voltage reference diode is a regular SU23 and it provides 3 volt for the ADC reference input. The EEPROM is a small 32 bit with the I2C in a small SU23-5 package. The crystal is the recommended type for the RP2040 taken from the hardware design guide. It's quite big, but there is a lot of space on this PCB and I will probably use a smaller one for future designs. I normally use 0805 packages for my designs, 
But in order to be able to fit enough decoupling capacitors around the RP2040, I had to use 0402 ceramic caps. These are quite tedious to place and I really recommend using a microscope for this. Unless you happen to have a pick and place machine at your disposal, of course. The rest of the passive components are 0603 and they are a bit easier to place. And finally we have reached the last component to place, which is the surface mounted USB-C connector. Okay, so we are ready with the SMT placement and it's time to solder the board. I'm using a heat bed set to 119 degrees Celsius, since I'm using a solder paste that has a melting temperature of 183 degrees Celsius. If you take a close look at the 0402 capacitors to the left of the RP2040, you will soon see a perfect display of a phenomenon called tombstoning. In my case, this is probably caused by not following the recommended temperature profile. But there could be other reasons as well. I had to fix the problem off camera and now we can turn off the heat bed and when the board has cooled down a bit I will remove it from the heat bed so it will cool down faster. There are a couple of solder bridges to fix here around the RP2040. For this I will use a solder braid or solder wick and I will need some extra flux for the rework. And I will also use my regular soldering pen with a fine tip. There are also a couple of solder bridges on the USB-C connector, so I will have to fix that as well. Make sure that you check that there are no bridges between the pads under the connector. Use flux and the braid to remove that, because you don't want to fry the USB port on your computer. There are also a couple of through-hole components that you need to solder to the board. Make sure that the header pins are properly seated and aligned before you solder them in place. You can use a spare breadboard as a fixture for this. Now we are ready to test the board and the first test will be to check for shorts between the supply lines and the ground. First we check voltage in on the top. And after that, we check that 3.3 volt from the onboard regulator is OK. And finally, the 3 volt voltage reference on the right side. Final test is to check that the 0603 caps C10 and C14 are not shorted because these are the supply lines for the RP2040. Next, we need to power the board with plus 5 volt from an external power supply. A lab power supply with a current limiting is recommended. Connect the power supply to the pin marked V in and ground. Use the multimeter to check the 3.3 volt output and the 3 volt voltage reference output. Finally, check the voltage over the 0603 caps. C14 should measure 3.3 volt and C10 should measure 1.1 volt. Okay, now it seems safe to connect the board to the PC and flash a test software. When you connect the board the first time, it will go into boot cell mode and present itself as a USB storage device on your computer. Drag and drop the .uf2 file to the folder and the RP2040 will restart and execute the program. In my case, I have a small blink test program that will flash some LEDs on GPIO 14 and GPIO 15. All right, that's it for today. I have uploaded the Gerber files, iBOM and schematic diagram to my GitHub as usual. And in case you want to build a couple of these boards for your projects, I have also added a BOM and component placement file. This will make it easier for you to order boards with all SMD components already mounted. So with that, thank you for watching. Take care and I'll see you soon again.